This is the Insta360 smartphone gimbal. It's small enough to go in your pocket, has a selfie stick great for vlogging, has active track and a tripod. This is perfect for content creators, presenters, or just having family fun. We're gonna go through downloading the app, look at all its features. But first, let's look at how all these buttons work and setting this up. Inside the packaging, we've got a nice soft case. We've got this rubber sheath that can slide over the handle to give you a better grip, make it slightly uh, more comfortable for larger hands. The phone cl magnetic clip and the gimbal. So let's just move these out of the way for the moment because we won't be needing those right now. And it is marked with an arrow up uh, where you need to clip this on with the lens. It says camera up. So simply, there's my lens. We're going to clip this on. And then we're just going to open up the gimbal. And then we just clip the phone on, pointing upwards. Nice strong magnet. And then we can pull the stand down that's inside here and this pulls down and then to pull the stand out you just extend these feet there and then you can open this out we'll just do a tour of these buttons this has the double arrow just here and if we touch it once it flips the camera around into um, a selfie mode. If we double click it, it turns it into landscape. Along the bottom, we've got the on, off and sleep mode. You can hold that down for four seconds and it will just um, go to sleep. The record button here, or if you've turned this into photo mode here, then that will take a photo. You've got four little lights along the top here and it says auto, F, P, F and FPV. To change those, you it's touch sensitive and you imagine, it is, imagine it's like a dial. So if I was to roll around like this, it will change. The auto mode will just intelligently get used to your movements and follow what you naturally will be doing with your movements and give the best stabilization for that. So we scroll it in the direction we want to go. This is in auto. And then we can scroll to follow mode, which would be if I was to look up at a building or look down at the floor. Pan follow. Be like so. First person view, and you can see we can go in all different directions like that. And then the center button here will be the usual tilt and pan right and left. The trigger at the back, if I click it once, it does tracking. So wherever I go, it will follow me. So if I put this on its stand and then was to walk away to do a tutorial or something, it will follow me. So to click it once again, it takes the tracking off. To click it twice, we'll recenter the gimbal. So if I was to be looking down and I want to put it back on the horizon, I double click it and it brings it back onto the horizon. And then if I click it three times, it will completely turn around and shoot in the other direction. One, two, three. And if I hold my finger down, it's locked. Then we've got the wheel here. So the wheel is the zoom function. So the zoom only works the other forward facing camera. And then lastly, we've got the selfie stick. This is quite handy for doing vlogs, walking, talking, taking photos of you and your family. And this has a tilt here as well. So you can get a really nice angle. So, and of course you can just use it as a tripod on the table. So now let's get into the studio and just have a look at downloading the app and all the functions of the app. So let's get to it. 
Inside the box, the gimbal comes in. There is a card with a QR code on it. You can scan that, and that takes you to a website where you can download the app for iPhones or Androids. Or there is a link in the description. You can click on that. When I initially downloaded the app, it did ask to do a firmware update straight away. So that was also necessary. So let's go through the app. I'm going to start at the top and go anti-clockwise. So in the top near the center, you've got the hand gesture symbols so that you can make it take a video, take a, a photo or to stop recording. And then if you come further around, you have different filters you can put on. So a bit like Instagram filters and then going to the left. And this is where you have your shot gallery. So you can click in here and it will give you lots of suggestions of how to create a film depending on your subject. So it could be family, um, social thing, city, sport. So, and it will give you lots of different ideas of the types of shots you can take. And you could literally follow those through and tick them off as you go. So it's quite inspirational, it's quite a smart idea. So just below the home button, you've got where you can adjust your resolution. So you can have it at 4K, 1080, 720, and then how many frames per second. Uh, and just below that, you've got auto, looks like a camera, and that's where you can change your white balance. So if you just click on there, and you can have fluorescent lights, incandescent lights, cloudy day. Um, I find just on auto works better. Not a big fan of uh, the other settings they've got in there. And you can uh, adjust any ISOs and shutters, etc. Below there, the little symbol of um, a gimbal and this is really handy to to know at the top it's got flow mode this is this buttons at the top here the dots here and if you it's on auto the first one and you can click on it and you can change whether it wants to be follow pan follow or first person view and just below that you can change what these buttons do the speed of the joystick in the center here and the speed of the zoom wheel so that it comes in default it's at medium you can make it faster or slower and you can adjust whether you want the front camera to be on auto tracking or not you can have that turned off and you can have uh, auto tracking always on or always off you can reverse the direction of the joystick and then you can have the um, flow sound and vibration on or off Auto calibration now is very important, I think, to know where this is because as soon as I fired this up for the first time, my mobile phone was off at an angle, even if I double clicked the button here and it still wouldn't set the horizontal. So I had to go into auto calibration here and you have to have it on the tripod on a level table and you just click next and it will sort itself out, reset itself, reset the horizontal, good to go. I've had to do that twice, so I'm glad I knew where that was. So just bear that in mind. And then just below that, you've got the three dots. And this is where you can put grid lines on and off. I always like rule of thirds, so I have mine on. You can have histogram on, scene recognition, voice control, and there's other save on stitch pano photos save original hoop mode files things to come back to to play with they're off by default but just below that you've got a tutorial so you can click in there how to set this up or the function of any of the buttons and below that the flow button operation these here there's a reminder of how they work as well uh, and then the, just the device and the version you're on. So if it needs a firmware update, you know there's an update, you can check here to see if you've got the latest update or not. And then on the right hand side, it has hoop mode. Now this is kind of like people that love basketball, netball, games like that. And it has a little built in uh, function to be able to do some creative shots with basketball. 
so above that you have live streaming, then you have widescreen mode, you have dolly zoom, which will imitate like the Hitchcock movie where if you're focused on someone and you move in or move out, that the background kind of zooms. Then there's the video function, photo function. If you come down to photo, you've got some other little functions where if you want to do a timer at the top, there's a timer. And then on the left hand side, it's at 4.3. You can change what you want the photos to be, for example, 16.9 or a square or full screen. The last one is you can do pano photo. So it'll take a series of photos, stitch them together. Uh, and then at the bottom, you've got your photo gallery. And then above that, you've got switch view, same as you have here from front to back camera. Uh, if you want to take exposure on a different area, uh, you just touch on the screen. And there you have it, complete user guide. I think it's a cracking little piece of kit. It's really well thought out, smart design, works really well, and I think it's really good value. So I hope you found that useful. If you're looking at other gimbals and you're considering the DJI Osmo 6, then you can see it in that video over there. And please show me the love, subscribe to the channel here, and I will see you over there.